I've always been intrigued by the imagery and practices of the various religions practiced around the world. Some are solemn in nature, others quite festive. The Philippines, a majority Catholic nation, has no shortage of religious practices that permeate daily life throughout the country. With these practices, certain myths begin to develop. Today, we are going to investigate one of these myths in search of clarity and perhaps even an answered prayer. All right, guys, Happy New Year, Sa Inyong Lahat. I am here with special guest Carla. Hi, guys. Otherwise known as Serena Reina from Lambana, which you guys saw the video about that. If you haven't checked it out, please do. But today we have a very special video for you. Uh, and Carla's gonna tell you a little bit more about what we're doing today. Hey guys, I'm Carla. I play a Serena in a play about Philippine folklore where we talk about a lot of the superstitions Filipinos have. It's superstitions about the folklore and these magical creatures that you find in Philippine woods. And I find it interesting that Filipino superstition not just ends in nature or in history, it's gone all the way to religion. Even though the Spanish brought it here, completely from a different country, we were able to make it our own. In this church, we have a very strange tradition of offering something for good weather or passing a board exam, and that is offering eggs. Or for love life, Diva. <laughs> for love life, as, as I very sadly know, we'll find out more about that story later. Well, long forever. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Filipinos ask for different things. Maybe 20 years ago, they would have asked for a new VHS player, but now they're asking for a new iPhone, or they're asking for new YouTube subscribers. So everything changes with regards to what they want, but something never seems to change. And that's how Filipinos ask for what they want. The Philippines is a very, very religious country, and although not as many people are going to church every day, and dressing head to toe in Maria Clara wear right now, some traditions still prevail, such as offering eggs when you don't want it to rain during your wedding day, or if you want your boyfriend to love you back. <laughs> There's an egg here for pretty much everything under the sun, and I think it would be exciting, gotta credit you for that, for that one, to check Dad out jokes. why Filipinos still do this after all this time. What made this tradition stick almost 300 years later? And if these eggs are truly what they claim to be because I have heard rumors about a conspiracy and we'll delve into that later but first we're gonna buy some eggs because it's the start of everything. All right guys, so we're here in front of the church now and we're gonna go through the process of getting the eggs and uh, see what that is like and see if we can get some insight onto the truth of this myth. My favorite color. Yeah. So, board exam and studies. Yeah, I think that's the best color. And then, what are the most important color? Yellow. Yellow. Okay. Para sa kung para sa lahat ng bago. Okay. Ano ka talaga nandaan? Depende dito. Kung ano 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 kung Thank you, Basila, sa'yo. Sa pag-alala. Oh, balik sila pa. 
So we're getting the pink eggs for Carla kasi walang jowa siya. Kawawa naman, joke lang. But yes, the pink ones are for luck and love. So, sana all. Thank you po. Thank you din po. Anong pangalan nito? Sampagita po. Sampang... Sampagita. Sampagita. Sampagita, yan. special letter that was given to St. Clair along with bouquets of flowers and of course her traditional Sampagita. Everybody needs St. Clair of Assisi, the patroness of this church. The Monasterio de Santa Clara is the oldest monastery in all of Asia and all the monasteries that you're going to find in this country and beyond follow this tradition. It started all the way back in 1621. I was just telling Mike that I used to be a teacher and in Lambano, where I play a Serena, there's a lot of Philippine history involved, which Mike got to experience because I was in his route. So just a little history lesson. There was an old Spanish nun who decided she loved St. Clair so much that she wanted to put up her own St. Clair monastery. And she got 20 Spanish maidens to renounce all worldly pleasures to live a life wearing brown habits for the rest of their lives secluded from the world in this lovely monastery where they pray all day. Now not everyone was happy about that decision because when the monastery was being built there were 20 very disappointed bachelors who signed a petition begging the sister not to let their girlfriends hide away for the rest of their lives. But the power of the Lord is stronger and so the monastery prevailed. Hallelujah! The sun is out! And that's also the beginning of how LDR started. <laughs> 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 No, that's not really true because once you enter the monastery, you're not allowed to know anything about the outside world. Some Catholics back in the Spanish time called it a living death to enter this monastery because once young girls entered, they were never heard of ever again. When they make their vows, they must promise never to think about anyone or anything outside because they're offering their lives to the Lord, praying, taking in eggs and singing. I don't want to be a nun when I retire. It'll be really fun. <laughs> So we have the eggs, and what is the next step? The next step is to offer them with a prayer petition. So, of course, we don't just offer eggs for nothing. We offer it because it's something that we promise to get what we desire. And there are nuns here who pray every single day, and we write a letter to them telling them the reason why we gave these eggs. And once they find it with the eggs, they take in the eggs somewhere I don't know, and they pray for your attention to happen. A 
Okay, so I just asked Carla if she wanted to share what she wrote for on The Wish, and like a good sport, she has agreed to share her wish. So what are we wishing for, Carla? Not love anymore. I used to get pink eggs here all the time until 2015 when I realized they weren't working. And I started wondering, what is in these eggs? If I've been buying them and offering them and praying with all my heart and they're still not granting my wish. So that was five years ago. Now I have green eggs because these are for money. And this is my intention. I pray for abundance for everyone and I want to feel like I deserve money. If I don't deserve love, at least I deserve money. I think it's uh, you know, pretty obvious that they go somewhere, these eggs. And Ate has told me that a lot of the eggs go to the orphanage. So we have a lot of very strong, very healthy kids because eggs and protein are good for you kids. And apparently the nuts also use a lot of eggs in their cooking. I can just imagine like how much fun they'd have thinking of more stuff to do with eggs. Like leche flan, uh, llanera, what, what else is made of eggs? Yeah, those kids are eating better it's than me. Is. <laughs> yeah, I bet it's a lot healthier. And in my research, the egg started off as maybe this urban legend or that urban legend or that urban legend. It was so long ago that you can't really chase where it came from. But Santa Clara is a patron saint where they offer eggs to because Clara means clear. And egg whites are clear, and that's why they offer raw eggs to her. Because according to one of the head sisters here, as long as you have clear intentions, a clear conscience, and the, the desire for clear weather, you're gonna get it if you offer that clear egg to Santa Clara. And Clara is the Spanish word for a moment of beautiful weather within the storm. So Catholic devotees, they sort of see St. Clair the same way, you know, in the midst of all of these storms around, she's the one clear thing that they can depend on. And most of the people who come here are just about to celebrate their wedding and they offer eggs so there will be clear skies during their wedding day. Another urban legend is that somebody wanted to offer something to the monastery and they didn't know what to offer. So they asked the monks, what do you want? And then they said, we want eggs. I guess because eggs are very, very nutritious, very cheap to get, very healthy. So guys, we were just talking with a couple here trying to see if they wanted to be in the vlog and unfortunately they had to leave. But they had this beautiful newborn baby with them and Carla was just telling me that when she was talking to them, uh, I didn't understand everything, it was in Tagalog. Um, but that they had prayed here for the baby and their wish came true, Diba? Right? Yeah, I saw that beautiful baby, the baby that came from an egg. There you go, the baby <laughs> literally came from an egg. I can share with her beautiful bounty of red eggs, as beautiful as her. I can share some green red eggs. And for um, 
pag mag-offer ka ng egg, pag mm-hmm. may something ka na wish mo, gusto mo ipang pray. Mm-hmm. For red is for travel. Travel! Saan yung pag gusto pumunta? Um, by summer sa Cebu. Cebu! Ito yung family namin eh, yes. na side ng father. Mm-hmm. Mahirap ba makayating sa Cebu? Um, Minsan po. Okay, okay. So you're yeah. just offering I mean, for good luck? Uh, for good luck and mm-hmm. safe travel. Kasi kasama yes. ko yung buong family and oh. syempre may kids. Yeah, so it's very safety. important to you. Ah, uh, nag-offer ka na ba ng egg travel? Opo. Lagi, oh, every, lovely. parang, every, parang, every month, mm-hmm. pupunta ako parang Thanksgiving na rin. Mm-hmm. Hindi lang for wishes, pero pag may gusto kang ipagpasalamat oh, sa taan. Oh, Ano, long time advocate na po tayo yung okay. same birds. Nagkakatotoo pa rato yung wish yung, ano, yung wish ninyo. Yung mga wish ko naman, opo. Matagal, yung oh, iba, lucky, kahit, lucky. kahit matagal dumating, <laughs> ano, yun, nagibigay ni Lord. Okay, ako hindi lucky kasi ilang taon ko nang bumibili ng mga pink eggs. Wala pa na akong boyfriend. <laughs> so, kano, paano niyo po nalaman yung tradition of, ano, of your eggs? mother ko po. Ah, yung mother ano, mo, nag-offer din ng eggs dito, kaya pinasin niya sa'yo. Tapos yung tita po namin na nasa mm-hmm. yung mga family din na. In the whole Sila, family, opo, so it's a family tradition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pag if ever, kunyari, may hospital, mm-hmm. or pag may isang like mga exam, mm-hmm. work, mm-hmm. laging dito. Mm-hmm. Yung mga friends din po ninyo, naniniwala? Mm-hmm. Okay, like, so it's buhay na buhay ko yung tradition. Wala nagsasabi na, eggs lang yan. Ay, wala po. Like, wala. For, Every, example, everyone in the Philippines believes in this. <laughs> and for example, yung sa mga college, mm-hmm. pag board, um, yes. bar exam, mm-hmm. yun, lalagyan lagi maraming tao. That's so yun. wonderful. I hope your travel dreams come true. Cebu Thank is you. so beautiful. Good luck yeah. to you. Ang ping sa imong biyahe sa Cebu. Behind this great wall are the sisters. And the sisters, they still wear those brown habits, the one you s- that you see in the medieval pictures. And their gowns are just an inch above their ankles. They're the most traditional group in all of the Philippines, possibly all of Asia. And they've been here since 1950, ever since World War II forced them to move out of their you know, original place in intermuros. Those nuns got an awakening of a lifetime, literally, when they experienced bombs just falling under combat all the way through. And uh, it took them five years after 1945 when it got bombed, and finally they got here in beautiful, quiet Katipunan. And I've been to Mass here before, and while the Mass would go on, I'd hear this beautiful music from in here, and it's the nuns singing. Probably the only indicator that you'll ever see in the outside world that these nuns exist. It's a really interesting tradition because if you enter this place as a nun, you have to be dressed in a wedding gown because you're about to marry Jesus and with, you're with your whole family. And your whole family is crying because they're never going to see you again. And the mother superior is going to ask you over and over again, do you really want to be here because this is a place full of penance and mortification. And they keep saying, yes, yes, yes. Then after they get in here, like Mike said, they only get to see their family like three times in a year. And they can decide after one year whether convent life is for them. If that, they can go. But if they decide to stay, then they stay forever. Just like their patron, St. Clair. St. Clair was a noble woman, one of the richest people in Italy. And she just decided to give away all of that money to the poor and live serving God and these you know these nuns have a very high standard to live up to Uh, another theory why it was eggs that they serve is because St. Clair was a very close follower of St. Francis and back then it was the male missionaries that begged for food 
So they would beg for food and most of the time they would get an egg because it was cheap but nutritious. And it was St. Clair's job to basket all of those eggs, bring them to the poor, cook them, share them with the nuns. So they're just following that tradition of giving simple food that can be used well. Another interesting thing is that these walls are probably made from egg whites because that used to be an ingredient in making the cement. And maybe that's why so many monks asked for eggs because it's excitingly useful, except for my love life. <laughs> So we're trying to find a few more people to talk to about what they're wishing for and about the eggs and uh, their thoughts about it, but uh, so far we're striking out, so I'm hoping we can find a couple more people that'll be willing to chat with us. Here's the dog. We are here beside where people offer where their wedding band appears and we met this very interesting, very beautiful lady, Miss. And if it's a little Miss Rose. Miss Rose decided not to give eggs. That's something I've never heard of before, but instead she gave toiletries to the nuns. So eggs are not the only things that you can give the nuns. You can pretty much give anything. Yeah, because I imagine that many eggs would give the nuns cholesterol. You wouldn't want that. <laughs> so we are here with... Celine. Celine and... Faye. Wow, Malaygayang Bati! Did you offer blue eggs here before? Uh, you asked for blue eggs? Uh, only really toilet please. Oh, that's wonderful. Maybe, yeah, maybe toilet just have that extra <laughs> experience. How about you? I'm praying to pass my college and my business. How do you guys write the petition? Uh, writing petitions for some time? I started it when yeah. I was still in college. Mm -hmm. So every time that I have a a challenging, challenging event in my life. So it started um, when taking my finals, mm -hmm. for, when when I took the board exam. So also oh. for the city here, we went we went here together with my husband. Mm -hmm. And then at the time that before getting married yes. or before meeting my husband, I mm -hmm. was praying for for that. Mm -hmm. And then when I when I got married. Mm -hmm. I got pregnant a year a year after the other. So my first was a son. So for my second I was praying for a girl. Yes. So I was telling St. Clair and yes. the poor Clairs that if if it will be granted that my I will have a daughter. I will name her after St. Clair. Oh, wow. So actually they're Ate. She's okay. not with us now. Okay. She's named Jean Claire. Mm -hmm. Claire without an eye yes. for her Saint Claire. Yes. And every time, uh, on all my petitions so far, I've been answered. Oh, wow. So we, we never failed to come here. So I, I passed on the tradition to them. Oh, that's so great. every time that any of them will be having a, a life changing event mm -hmm. or something that they really need to pay for. Mm -hmm. So you just asked for one daughter, but in care gave you more daughters. Wow. And you know about the toiletries. I learned it from my mom because my mom said mm -hmm. everyone is giving eggs. Mm -hmm. So why not give something that the nuns need? Because mm -hmm. for a while she she not really here in this uh, she was she this she had um she initially wanted to be a lotus. So she said that the nuns need those things, mm -hmm. toiletries, so, so, so she said, why not go for those? Maybe got them inside your phone, you got them something. So, it may be a good suggestion for them, for others to, to, to bring like what the nuns will be needing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Feminine hygiene, mm -hmm. or even oral hygiene. We've got one of St. Clair's favorites right here, guys. And that's Rose. Thank you so much. So we learned that most of the people who offer things here get it from their family because their mother and their aunt and their grandmother have had a long tradition of 
offering eggs and getting their petitions granted or like getting difficult things off their backs and I guess uh, that's enough for you to believe if everyone's been doing it like everything is inherited from parents good and bad and this is one good thing and that's why it stays alive it's good that it stays alive because most people don't know about this anymore right like if you ask your classmates they're like why am I giving an egg to a saint yeah, like uh, do you know of any other people like oh your age you still offer eggs Alright guys, so Carla and I are here in this beautiful food park, uh, Malapitsa Church, and we learned a lot and talked to some wonderful people there who were so nice to share their experiences. But the constant theme you've heard through here is that poor Carla has had such a difficult time in love, and uh, I think that shows that sometimes wishes just don't come true. So we have some pink eggs here, and uh, she's gonna release some of her frustration and let you all know how she feels about the topic. I have spent a fortune buying these eggs in the past five years, and I've always wondered what they were made of because they haven't done much for me. And I heard this conspiracy theory that the eggs of this cell are actually rotted because the nuts just give the eggs back to the vendors and they share the money so they won't have to keep buying eggs. This was told by one of my college friends who lived around the area as well and I just had to find out for myself like is that true? Like is there really a... Is it all good intentions or... Are there some bad eggs? Well, we'll find out like whether whether it was a scam, that's why they had no power, these eggs, or whether it's just me. So we're gonna find out right now. Do, do I smash it with your tripod? Yes, you can not. I'm gonna smash with my tripod with the anger of five years of unrequited love. <laughs> oh! <laughs> a tear just left my eye because this is a good egg. And I guess love just isn't for me, guys. <laughs> the end. <laughs> so, Carla is a good egg, so she's been a really good sport about this. So that's just a fun way to wrap up this video. It's been very educational. We learned a lot. We got to talk to some awesome people. I'm so thankful for Carla. Thank you. I'm so happy to be part of my YouTube. So she told me all kinds of great history about this place. So uh, we'll try to make more videos uh, sharing some education about uh, Manila and the Philippines and some of the interesting things you may not know. So thank you guys for tuning in. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat and we'll see you all later. Bye!